Hi, today I'm just going to be quickly showing you how to install the uh, Scarlet Eclipse, which is a site alarm. So for abandoned buildings, that sort of thing, it's just a really basic intruder alarm that's fully wireless and has some things that are quite advanced, like uh, Discord webhook monitoring, but it's not got any menus, it's not got anything like that. It's just a really simple system to install and use for abandoned buildings. So, it comes with a tag and the system itself. The tag, you don't have to edit anything at all in here. You can just put this in your starter pack into your admin commands, anything like that. Whatever you want, just put whatever you want, no configuration required. Then this is the folder for the system. So going through the devices, that is just a repeater. So that's basically just an empty junction box. You don't actually need that. That's just for aesthetics if you want to place them around um, for realism, that sort of thing. It's a wireless repeater, basically. But you can just delete it if you don't want it. That is the panel uh, slash keypad. So you can only have one of these. You can't have multiple keypads or anything. There's just one. Um, and it, it's the panel as well. So there's a uh, screen here. It's not a touch screen. It's just a normal LCD. And then an LED ring around here to indicate the system state. Then these two PIRs are functionally identical. Just this one has a corner bracket on it. That one doesn't up to you whichever one you want to use then this is a speaker so this will basically any noises the panel makes this will make two um pretty self-explanatory there's only actually two ways you can configure anything on the system so in each pir there are three values so there's false alarm prevention and this is a new system that i've come up with uh, it's not in the expanse or any other system it's just in this for now and basically what it does is when something hits the invisible part for the PIR, the detection zone, which you obviously scale to the room, um, if that's enabled, what it'll do is it'll check if what's hit it is a player. And if it isn't a player, it'll ignore it. Whereas if it is a player, it'll trigger like normal. This is really good for abandoned buildings where you might want things unanchored and doors flying open and whatever shit like that. Oops, didn't mean to swear. <laughs> um, so it just stops the system triggering on stuff like that. Um, so there's no real reason you want it disabled, but you can disable it just in case you enjoy false alarms. Next value is entry. Now that's pretty self-explanatory as well. With that enabled, when the PIR is triggered, it'll set the system into entry. With that disabled, when the PIR is triggered, it'll go off straight away. Station ID is like a zone name but you've got to keep it short because the actual display on here for the, the name of the zone is quite small so you've got to keep this short so you, you couldn't have like northwest um corridor pir2 that just it's too long for the screen it might fit but it's, it's just too long so instead you have to abbreviate things so northwest becomes nw corridor becomes c PIR, you can just get rid of, and it comes NWC2. So you just got to shorten things like that. That's all the configuration there is for the PIRs. The speaker has no configuration. Oops, speaker has no configuration, um, unless you want to change the volumes and stuff, but doesn't really need it. Um, this is the other way to configure, well, where you configure other things in the panel, system config module script. The banner is company name to be displayed on the panel, site name is the site name to be displayed on the panel, webhook URL is for the Discord webhook monitoring, so you get a Discord webhook URL, put it in there and it will send messages when the system is triggered, uh, or you can just leave that blank and it won't. Entry timer is how long in seconds you want the system to give you when it's triggered, when an entry zone is triggered to get to the panel before it goes off. Exit timer is how long in seconds again you want the system to give you to get out of the building when you start the system arming. Um, so 30 seconds for both of those is all right. Armed on boot is whether you want the system to be armed when the game starts. So if you have that true, when the game starts, the system will be armed and ready to go. Whereas if that's false, when the game starts, the system will be disarmed and you'll need to arm it. So that's that for configuration. And now I'm just going to go over the the functionality of the system basically so armed on boot is enabled so after the system's finished booting up it does a little animation as you'll see in a second but once it's finished booting up the system will be armed 
There you go, that's the animation. And then it's gone to the home screen, and as you can see, the LED ring around the panel is red, which means the system is armed. So, if I go and trigger a PIR... The system's going to go off. Now, I've just muted the audio for you, but the system is actually still going off, because you can't disarm this system and then look at the alarms. You have to look at the alarms and then disarm the system, and as soon as you disarm the system, it, it doesn't show you what triggered anymore. That's because, really, if you were, if it was an abandoned building in real life, you would have a, uh, a security team monitoring the, uh, the system, basically, um, and then they'd turn up on site, they'd go to the panel, see where it is, leave it going off, most likely, probably wouldn't actually, but that's kind of what they should do. Uh, leave it going off, and then go and find whatever device is triggered and check it's not someone there, check it's a false alarm, whatever, and then disarm the system. But anyway, so it's still going off, still very loud for me, but you can't hear it. What it displays on the screen is device triggered, then it shows you uh, how long ago it was. That's a little bug, that should say one minute, but it's a little bug. I'll fix that before it's released. Uh, so it tells you how long ago the device triggered, which is useful for knowing if the intruder's likely still here, or if they're gone. Then it shows you the uh, the name of the PIR, so that's the name, station ID, by, and then it shows you the player that triggered it, so by Tokira. Wireless distance down here is how far away the device is from the panel in studs, so that two studs away, because it's really close. Um, that's just useful to know how far away where where's triggered is. So just to give you an idea quickly, whether it's close to you or at the other side of the building. So to disarm the system and shut it up, just get your tag out and tap it. And that's silence the system and reset it. This is what the display shows when the system's disarmed. So you've just got SCADA, Eclipse, Site Alarm, Security Company, Unnamed Site, and obviously that's the banner, that's the site name. So wherever you set those two in the config, they'll be there. So now the system's disarmed, there's no chime or anything, because that's just not a feature these have. Um, so all you can really do now to arm, is arm the system, and to arm the system, just get your tag out, and again, tap it. Now, if you want to cancel the exit, so if you realise you don't actually want to leave the building, you can just present your tag again, and that stops it, but I'll just let it carry on. So, just as a countdown... now it's armed and it'll do a little chime. And now the system's armed. So um, yeah, that's how to use that. I can't show you how to disarm it in entry because both those PIRs are programmed as instant. But basically what you do is you trigger the zone, it'd come up on the panel, present tag, give you a timer, you present your tag and it disarms it. And same when it's armed, if I want to disarm the system now, just present my tag and it's disarmed. So yeah. Really simple to operate, like I say, no codes or anything, just tags, and there's no config for the tags, it's ready to go out of the box, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, I also will mention, this is a licensed system, so if you get this out of the toolbox, it won't work straight away. Uh, you have to pay 75 Robux currently for a license. It's, uh, you can buy the license by going to the SCADA license center. Uh, which you can find on the SCADA group, Roblox page, or um, through the Discord server or something like that. Uh, and you basically just need to buy a Game Pass. Link will be in the description to the Game Pass anyway. You buy that Game Pass, and then you can use the system in any of your games, so any of the games that your player owns, and then also any games that groups you own own. So say you've got five groups, you own five groups. They're under your, your account name, and you actually own those groups. You can use this system in any of any games in any of those groups, unlimited number, and your games. So really, it's quite a cheap system, um, and yeah, just works well.